Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy GT, Torture Talks Podcast. And I wish this podcast was brought to you by some brewery or beer that could fucking send me once it just send me some fucking coupons. <laughs> Give me a buy one, get one free. Shit. Buy a buy three, get one free. Fucking just I don't I don't even want free shit. I just want some shit. <laughs> Some nobody, <laughs> some nobody asking some famous ass call me like, imagine like if I went to Budweiser and I was like, Hey, uh, I can't earn you money in any way at all whatsoever, but I want you to give me free shit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't like to ask for like free stuff because w- w- it, it like what makes you think you're deserving not not you as in you like I'm not talking about anyone in particular but just generally speaking like what what makes you think you are deserving of free shit uh that's why I'm always saying like oh give me like half off or some shit like that cuz I still like the product that they're providing and I don't mind paying for it if it especially if it comes along with good service Uh, Don't get me wrong, like, some people are sponsored and, you know, they get shit for free, and because, because that's that's just kind of the way marketing works, like, you get, um, like, let's say, let's say Papa John, y'all know, y'all know my boy PJ, I'm 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 a fan of Papa John's, and, like, I'm a UFC fighter, right, and I go to fight and I'm wearing my UFC shorts and shit, and then Papa John's, bam, plastered right on the leg. And then you're just like, oh, shit, this dude's like a heavyweight fighting champion and he eats Papa John's. He likes Papa John's. You know, I like that guy. So that guy must like things that I like because he's good. So he likes good things. So therefore, I'm going to eat Papa John's. That's, and that's the whole idea of how that shit works. But since I am nobody and I am nobody famous and... <laughs> <laughs> I have no influence on anyone's market shares. <laughs> and even then I'm still asking for like half off. That's still that's still free shit, right? Like even if even if it's a buy one get one free, I'm still getting some shit for free. Like it's still so it's contradicting as fuck at what I'm saying. But whatever, right? <laughs> whatever. That's that's neither here nor there. I wanted to hold up. I got a text just so y'all know my boy has made his return. Oh, never mind. Text went away. Fuck. I'm getting all these alerts right now. Um, no one important. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, no biggie. Um, I actually have like a shit ton of alerts and like notifications and emails that I should be replying to right now. But you know, sometimes I just got to get on the mic and. Just start, you know, talking, ranting, whatever. If you're listening to this, or maybe you just got it on in the background is just fucking noise. And, you know, it's just something so you're not sitting in silence. Or maybe you are actually listening to what I've been saying. And, you know, if you are, if you a real one, then, you know, I fucks with you. And I appreciate that. But it's uh, the whole point of this episode. What the fuck? The whole point of this episode. Sorry, some shit was... I'll be working on... Pre- okay, what the fuck ever. Alright, I'm putting my phone away. Um, whole point of this episode was... I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of... I was kind of... You know, when I say kind of in my feelings a little bit. It wasn't necessarily like I wasn't getting sad. I wasn't getting mad. But it was more of a realization. And... It definitely was kind of like a... Uh, I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. And I mean, granted, we all got our fucking vices, right? Um... Like I, I am a, I'm literally a habitual drinker and like, and it started off of me just liking beer and discovering that there's more beer out there than domestics. Like there's, there's, there's a lot more beer to be had than, you know, your Coors Light and your Bud Light and your Michelob and you know what I mean? And there's more than just the fucking Coronas and, and don't get me wrong, like, those beers are okay if we're talking domestics i actually do like michelob it actually kind of has like a like a sweetness like a sweet type of flavor to it as opposed to uh anything by anhauser which is 
quite literally just fucking yeast <laughs> and like no hops it's like fizzy water and it, you know like and it's it's funny too because it's totally different within generations like for instance like my my dad's generation i got my dad into craft beers and i i kind of got my dad into drinking more than just like coors and michelob and shit but whenever i see someone older and when i say older um as like right now i'm 25 right i'm I'm going on 26 and when i say older i'm i'm talking like 40s and 50s you know someone someone with 20 plus 20 plus years on me and they they religiously and only drink domestics which i mean it makes sense because growing up that's that's really all there fucking was you know just Bud Light, Budweiser, like, that's really all there was in this country. Uh, you know, there was no Sam Adams, there was no Blue Moon or Fat Tire or, I mean, if you really want to start getting, like, commercial craft, you know, there was no Ballast Point, Arrogant Bastard, you know, they're, like, they're, they didn't have any of that shit. And so, it, it's just kind of, it, it's almost like they conditioned themselves to uh like like imagine if you like grew up eating mcdonald's burgers right for your whole entire life and now all of a sudden you got like red robin and then you're just to you you're like oh yeah a new burger joint opened up all right cool but it's whatever i know i like mcdonald's and that's what i've been eating so i'm gonna keep eating it it's uh it's almost like you kind of condition yourself and and maybe that's just me because i'm not a fan me personally right I'm not a fan of just staying, uh, I don't like not keeping my mind open to change and options, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm always and constantly, uh, like for instance, like I'm always, I'm always searching for new bands and new artists when it comes to music, trying to not necessarily find that new sound, but there's so many, especially nowadays, right? The market is so saturated with artists and bands and music and everyone's like mixing genres and shit. And, you know, some people are trying to become the new sound and others are just experimenting. And, you know, there is some that's, uh, you know, on the up and up or maybe they stay underground their whole like, you know, we all know those underrated artists, the overrated artists the uh music music right now the music industry is definitely in a uh it's in a weird place because i don't think the music industry anticipated that the internet was gonna be so impactful if that makes sense because like keep in mind right like apple you know and and i'm gonna go on the story with apple and regardless how you feel of the apple industry they're as of right now, they're worth a trillion dollars. So they're, they're doing something right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I'm an Android person, right? I'm an Android person. I'm a PC person. Uh, and I don't like Apple products because the difference between Apple and like the difference between Mac and PC, Apple and Android is it's the operating system. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Apple's operating system. I don't like iOS, Uh, I'm not a fan of like what, 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 uh, just give some examples like Safari and what, what the fuck they else they got Apple drop. Like you kind of have to become accustomed to Apple's like, I don't want to say cult because that holds a heavy negative connotation, but with Apple, it's either you're with it or you're not, you know, you're, you're either in it or you ain't (laughs) like it is a, um, it's totally, it's totally a thing. And, and I don't like, uh, and granted for someone who's, you know, there's plenty of people out there and this is what they capitalize on, right? Their market is for your average person who isn't very tech savvy. And tell me not for those people who are pretty tech savvy and you know, you do like, like, let's say you have an iPhone and you jailbreak it and shit, like your, your iPhone becomes really gimmicky and you have like, it's just kind of buggy. It's just, it, it's not really, uh, it's not really foolproof if that kind of makes sense and it's not something that you would actually basically what i'm saying is i don't like apple and mac because you can't customize and you can't you can't make it your own 
right? I still like a little bit done for me, which is why I go Windows and Android. I still like, you know, going stock stuff, but I don't like uh, conforming to someone else's lifestyle, if that makes sense. You know, for, for lack of some better terms and words, uh, but I can't deny the products, the actual products, what is actually inside of these machines. Because iPhones are, they're good phones. They will last you, well, they they should last you a long time. But the way that Apple does their software with their updates and everything, they actually bog down and they actually make your performance worse on older systems. It's a marketing thing. Apple has marketing down to a fucking T. They have it down to a like such a specific science it's ridiculous so just to give you an example of of just just how smart steve jobs was right the internet came around and the music industry was like oh shit people want to download music as opposed to and instead of buying music we're noticing a big loss in the sell of cds and sell of vinyls even though vinyls are kind of making a comeback as of you know right now but then so Steve Jobs was like, all right, we'll bet. Hey, get get this. We will take um, this thing called iTunes. I have iTunes. And artists are, It's this is where it's starting to go, right? Because Steve Jobs was really good at being a visionary. He could see where trends and things were going. And that's what he would capitalize on. And he could see that the internet was becoming a thing because it's, tell me not, it's so much more convenient you can you can download single songs right you don't have to download a whole album you know then there's songs you like songs you don't like you actually have to go out to the store and you know you got to interact with people and you know then you're spending yeah. gas and shit you know doing whatever like it's just at the end of the day what really what is what is about business and shit is what is the most convenient because conveniency will sell over everything else and if you look at all the top shit right now everything no, that's no, hot everything no, that's God, selling no, please, it's Michelle. plain and simple just because it's convenient and people will buy and they will pay for stuff simply because it works and it's reliable and that's that's just facts that's that's what a lot of companies fail to grasp and a lot of failing you know they might be good for a little while and then they fail because one you got to keep up with the times right Con change is the only constant right and you got to keep up with the trends and uh not necessarily keep up with all trends because you're not you're not going to be able to but there's definitely a happy medium with um you know there's always the things that are constantly changing and then you have like the medium trends they stick around for a little bit and then they go and then um you got like your shit that's timeless, some, something that'll never change. But I, I kind of digress. I kind of, I did digress. Um, but Steve Jobs, he said, he said, I got iTunes, right? Give me some licensing, basically give me permissions to put your song in my iTunes library and we will sell your songs for a dollar, right? Which is easy. And a dollar, not even a dollar, 99 cents, right? It was less than a dollar, and that's easy. You just click on buy. It downloads to your library. You got it forever. Now you have a single that you can listen to, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. Instead of buying a whole album for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, and potentially not liking it. And so, and just really to the consumer, it makes a lot more sense, right? Because why would I go out and spend 10 to 15 bucks on an album when I only listen to three songs? So essentially, I'm, I'm buying I'm buying three three dollars worth, and and they're losing money, right? Apple they they lose money in iTunes, which is part of the reason why super popular songs became like a dollar twenty nine. It was kind of to make up for that, as well as granted, it's only it's only like forty cents, so that's not too big of to most people that's not too big of a money jump. But um. They knew, right? So so Steve Jobs was like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this, yada, yada, yada. You know, we still have partnerships. They're still making money, but in essence, they're still losing money. And if you know business, losing money is losing money, whether it's five cents, whether it's uh, 35 cents, a dollar, like a loss is a loss and a profit is a profit. And so whenever they would buy, whenever someone would buy this song on iTunes, 
they were losing money, but they were making money back with the iPod, right? And to listen to stuff on iTunes, you needed an iPod. And the iPod was pretty much fucking revolutionary. You know, it had it had the little fucking wheel and shit, you know, something cuz everyone's used to buttons, you know, like we had, we all had buttons. But then you had the wheel, the little screen and everything was smooth and you know, you had your artist genre playlist. You know, it, the thing kept it was convenient. It was so convenient and it was easy to use and it was it was essentially stupid proof, right? And Jake supposed to take you could, this? and uh, I kind of, I, 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 I paused because I think of Microsoft and their Zoom. And when you compared the two, the Zoom was actually leagues better than the iPod. The only, the only reason why Zoom never caught on was because one, Apple already had the game, right? iPod was already out. Then they had the iPod video, the iPod classic. They were working on the iPod nano. They were like, the iPod was going. And then so Microsoft was like, no, get the Zoom, get the Zoom. It had a bigger screen. You could share music with other people that had Zoom. Uh, the music library was just as big. It like it had all these features and more. And it had more memory than the iPod, so you could put more music on it. But I'm not going to lie. Microsoft has always been bad at marketing. They've, they've always come, at least compared to Apple, like they've always been bad at marketing. But that's where Apple would always make their music or their money back. Was oop, got a burp. Pull up. Hey, we and that's that's where they would always make their money back. Was on devices, and then they would. Ooh, fuck! I think I'm getting the hiccups. Actually, shit. But that's also where they would make their money back was through accessories as well. Tell me not like. Why does why does Apple's accessories cost like 30 bucks and upward when you can go on Amazon or like mono price and you get the same exact piece but for like literally half the price, right? There's there's no reason why and, but people keep buying it and that's the thing. They keep raising prices, raising prices. People keep buying it and buying it and buying it. And they keep making money, right? They keep making money. And Damn, I went on a whole fucking story and shit. Um, but to finish, <laughs> to finish this, to finish this little explanation out. Uh, yeah, Apple. Apple has always been leading, and they haven't. They haven't always been leading in tech and features because if you, you know, if you saved me, man. What's going on here? If you had other devices, These just appear from uh, what Apple will do I can make is the they will the market. Room one floor up. Uh, can you take me they'll there? market sure. like Sounds technology, Follow me. and they'll call it like whatever, like because Apple always has to has to rename technology their own, like whether it's blue f blue foof, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and they haven't renamed those just because of uh, uh, you know the tsunami and the names and shit in between, like everybody. But you guys get what the fuck I'm saying. Hey. Where are you? Like if you have a Mac and you're trying to back up your, uh, how do you, um, Frankly, fuck. I'm too you're trying to back up to like your pictures and videos and shit, you, and you gotta use the, um, what the fuck do they call it? The vault or, uh, instead of doing NFC, it's called like airdrop or, you know, instead of like iMessage, for instance, it's iMessage is literally an app. It's well, granted, everything's an app on your phone, but you know, like Facebook messenger, that's all iMessage is, just with like an Apple skin. Like it just, you can still play games, you can still react, you can still, and, uh, but Apple is really smart. And they'll, and they'll have all these features listed out, but they'll only release some of those features like every year, every other year. And to people who use Apple exclusively, they're just like, oh yeah, they're coming out with this, and oh, this is so great, and oh, this is that, this is this, and this is that. When in all reality, it's actually, it's very old tech, but to use, so like, like Call of Duty, right? Uh, and this was, this was, wait, when, when did, when did Call of Duty 4 come out? Um, fuck. I remember Call of Duty 2 came out back in what? When did, when did the 360 come out? 2004, 2006, uh, something like that. And when Call of Duty 4 came out, and it really put, you know, like online gaming on the map, 
right? Because Halo, Halo was the one that put multiplayer on the map. And, you know, and of course, you know, you had your co-op and, you know, your split screen and everything. But when Halo 2 Pills came would out, hold the pain Xbox back for a while. Live and, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it was a thing. It was a thing. And then Call of Duty 4 came out and changed the fucking game. Like, that is what put online gaming on the map. Some people would argue, like, MMOs, like World of Warcraft and shit. Uh, but, I mean, WoW has been around forever. And, you know, we're simply talking commercial and whatnot. And so, so I'll, I'll say for consoles, right? For console, online console gaming, uh, Call of Duty 4 is what put it on the map. And then, you know, it started making a ton of money, started selling a shit ton of consoles. It started selling a, um, just like, act, like it was a cash cow. It immediately became a cash cow. You know, Call of Duty 5 comes out, it was successful. Modern Warfare 2 comes out. And it was even more successful than the first Modern Warfare. Because people didn't know that Call of Duty was kind of doing like an alternating thing between uh, Infinity Ward and Treyarch. And, I mean, if we're talking like developers and shit, Infinity Ward is was totally ahead of their time. That's, that's why we have all these... Um, I wouldn't say trends, but I would say standards. Yeah, arguably trends. But sprinting, right? And Infinity Ward was the one who did sprinting. Now, now you can't play a single game that doesn't have sprint mode. Like even Nintendo, like on their new Breath of the Wild, like they put that in their new Zelda game, uh, regenerating health. Once again, that was that was Infinity Ward. And no longer were the days of you know trying to find a health pack and you know grinding to beat the boss because you didn't have any health to fight them and shit. Uh, you know every everything has regenerating health. Or at least, you know, all, all games, all shooters and shit. And, and Infinity Ward has always been, they've always been a forward pioneer. In the game. They've always been about innovating and shit. And, like, tell me not, when, when Infinity Ward broke off and created uh, Respawn, that was when uh, they had, like, Titanfall. When Titanfall came out, and, you know, now you could run on walls, you could jump, you had these big-ass robots. And then was it, was it Advanced Warfare? I think Call of Duty came out with Advanced Warfare, and then, like, they had, like, the exosuits, you know, like, and it was literally just copying Titanfall, because when that shit came out, like, everyone was like, holy fuck, like, not only is this a fast-paced shooter, just like Call of Duty, right? Not only is this a fast-paced shooter, but now we can wall run, we can double jump, we can get in these big-ass maps, and we can fucking, like... It, it, it was something we haven't seen, especially, and this was right when the new generation was coming out, right when, you know, the one, the Xbox One and the PS4 was coming out. So it was something we haven't seen yet. But then sure enough, <laughs> sure enough, you know, Activision was like, nah, fuck that. We're putting that in our next game, you know, almost as to compete, right? It was, it was only, it was only to compete. But, um... I was I, I got off on a tangent, but I was saying you know when when Call of Duty uh, Four came out, World at War, then you had Call of Duty Two or uh, Modern Warfare Two, and I forget what came out after Modern Warfare Two, but then they went to Modern Warfare Three, and then you know they had Call of Duty Ghosts, and you know then they had all their Black Ops and all that stuff, and it's from a consumer point of view, you know, to your average gamer. Yeah, you know, like the in, like it has better graphics. The engine has more features. You can do more and more. But this is stuff that they could have done a while ago. But they want to keep they want to keep you feeling like the game is new, it's fresh, it's innovating, it's exciting. So they only add just a couple things here and there. You know, they only update the graphics, you know, every so little often just so like they're behind tech Like do you, I I hope that makes sense with what I'm saying. I, I really, really, really do hope it makes sense with what I'm saying and the fact that it's um, it's not innovating when you're behind on technology or when you're trying to push the envelope or you're trying to be a visionary. Like, for instance, Nintendo, um, you know, have, I have tons of respect for Nintendo because they are always taking risks. And, and to me... That's what always seems to um, gain the respect of people, whether it's movies, whether it's video games, what, you know, whenever, whenever a creator takes a risk is 
when it's the most innovative. And, and, you know, you'll always have like, like, for instance, right? Guitar Hero. Uh, Harmonix came out with Guitar Hero 1 and it came, they came out with Guitar Hero 2 and it was the shit it made people feel like they could play guitar you know without hitting bad notes uh, you know they're like shredding and shit you had your five buttons and shit and everything and then Harmonix uh, they left Activision and went with EA and they created Rock Band but then Activision they had to keep Guitar Hero going and Guitar Hero 3 was okay. It wasn't bad. You know, that's when Neversoft took it up. Uh, you know, that's when they stopped the Tony Hawk series, R.I.P. And it was, Guitar Hero 3 wasn't bad. It, it still wasn't as good as number two, but it wasn't bad. Um, would I go back to it? Yes. Would I go back to it before I went back to number two? Probably not. Uh... But then, no, Harmonix, they, they came out with Rock Band. And then, you know, now you could play the drums. Now you could sing. You know, they had all this peripheral equipment, and Hold you on, could dude. literally be a full entire man. band. What are you talking and, you know, Rock Band 2 was even better than number one. Uh, Rock Band 3 was still really good. Um, once again, in my opinion, it was... Uh, no, no, it was still... Yeah, no, Rock Band 3 was still good. Uh, it was just like this this was now they were trying to integrate especially with like rock band 4 when they came out with that that was actually rock band 4 was a sad release it was like a mini like passion project like rock band had just enough of a following to where they could make some money off of it and then i will say they they kind of tanked when they came out with rock band beatles and it wasn't it wasn't necessarily so much that um Okay, like how many like how many people nowadays do you way. know that actively listen to the Beatles? New York's you know nowadays be it's just too. oh yeah my parents listen to the Beatles oh my grandparents listen to the Beatles so I kind of no one no one is actively and when I say no one I'm talking about your average person right because we can only talk about your average baseline when it comes to money and business and shit like so and and that's that's why Activision always they they've always been good at making money. And they run these franchises into the ground and they make them these cash cows because most of your money is going to come from your average game. Right? And unfortunately now, that's kind of not the sense when you're talking with microtransactions and loot boxes and shit. Because the community, like the game community as a whole, like your hardcore gamers is probably... I mean, depending on your department and your console and shit, like what, maybe one to five? And that's stretching it, five percent? That's pushing it. But your average gamer, that's your market. That's who you have to appeal to. And so, when these microtransactions and these loot boxes came out, uh, your average gamer, they weren't buying, yeah, they'd, pro they'd probably spend like 20 bucks, like, you know, a dollar here, five dollars there, like whatever. But you had like, and granted, I don't know how these fucking people do it, right? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong and how much money I'm not making because there would be less than 1%, less than 1% that does spend up to like 10,000. And these, I'm not making this shit up. They will spend upwards of like 10 grand, five grand, you know, 800 on these just for some fucking skins or some emotes or some, you know, everything cosmetic. It doesn't even get you anything in the game. And so, you know, the suit and ties, right? The ones who, you know, go through all the paperwork and shit, they're the ones who, and all they see is numbers, right? All they see is money. And so it was getting so bad that they would put out these video games, they would put out these games and they were unfinished into like what, what, uh, Azura's Wrath by Capcom. To beat the game, you had to buy more DLC. And this this was like the beginning of it, right? This was this was the start and the beginning of it. But then EA they started to capitalize on it, and just recently, Battlefront Two had the worst launch ever. They had the worst launch because they were they were literally putting they were giving us an unfinished game. They would give us an unfinished game, but then. If you wanted, if you wanted, you know, more weapons, more missions, more levels, 
it had to be through loot boxes and it was all through chance loot boxes is all about chance and it's not random it is a program chance so if you really want something you gotta fucking grind your ass off and put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game just so you might get something like mid-tier and that is fucking robbery i don't care who you are i don't care what your viewpoint is that is blatant robbery so you're telling me that i'm spending my hard-earned money right let's say i am a passionate avid hardcore gamer and i work a minimum wage job and this game is 60 bucks and let's say minimum wage i know it, i know it varies all over the place but let's just say 10 bucks right let's just say 10 bucks minimum wage is ten dollars i have to in, in a game after tax comes out to almost you know depending on where you live you could be spending almost 70 bucks on one game so you're telling me i have to work a full fucking day right and even more than that because if you take out taxes and shit right they're taking taxes out of my paycheck and i'm paying taxes on this product i have to work more than a full day and this is this doesn't even go with like the cost of living and like rent you know what i mean like it's and essentially i just paid i just paid almost 70 bucks right because now now we're getting upwards to like a hundred dollars and you know they always oh buy the season pass pre-order like it's just the, the gaming has become a money pit and these people are buying all this stuff and they're paying for all this shit and especially the parents who pay it for their kids right because the parents they're they're trying to make a living the they're trying the to you know uh work an honest day and they're trying to and you know they have their kids and their kids are like oh i want the new call of duty and so the parents are just like all right well call of duty i see it on the tv all your friends talk about it you know that just must be the thing and so now this parent has to they, they and they buy their kid this shit right but then there's always, oh, mom, can I buy this? Oh, dad, can I get the new this? You know, fucking Fortnite. One of the girls, one, right, one of these girls that I was talking to, her son bought over like 400 bucks. Granted, I'm not gonna lie. At the end of the day, it's always up to the parent to make sure that your shit's good and that your kids can't get into your shit. But, you know, things happen, right? Accidents happen. And her kid ended up spending over 400 bucks on her card on Fortnite because he wanted to buy like some new skins and like some new dances or some shit like that and granted and and you can't be too mad at the kid right you can't be too mad at the kid because one he's only like what eight to ten years old he doesn't know what it means to work for money he doesn't know he doesn't really fully grasp and realize how much four hundred thousand dollars is all he knows is what i want costs this much and that's literally it he, he doesn't have an understanding of value you know what i mean and so you they he runs up this card and she was telling me and you know she was trying to get the charges reversed she was trying to get refunds and i think uh she actually got most of it back but you can't get back like taxes like it's a legal thing or something like that okay fellas the police but it's it's mind-boggling how um these companies will they will capitalize on shit like that they will capitalize shit like that i mean really at the end of the day when you because because i as someone who used to work at gamestop right i worked at gamestop for about four years almost five years and when you're buying a rated m game like when grand theft auto 5 came out you know like it was the, the store was packed line out of the door all day and there would be and and granted it was by policy we had this we had to check every single transaction if the parent knew what was in the game and if they were all right with purchasing that game whether it was for them whether it was for their kid whether it was a gift it didn't matter every single time right excuse me ma'am are you okay with purchasing that you know this game is rated m uh for blood intense violence gore nudity strong sexual content strong language like yada 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 and a lot of these parents like most of them would just be like yeah yeah whatever i don't give a fuck and me personally i don't give a fuck right like I'm just trying to get to the next customer. You know, I'm not judging. But then there was plenty, plenty of times where it was just like, like they'd be like, wait, wait, what? Like what's in this game? And we're like, yeah, it's rated M for mature, seven, 17 and up. And you know, you could say, yeah, these parents are stupid for not looking for not whatever. But once again, 
Once again, you can't blame them. You, you can't fully, fully blame them. You can't fully blame them because all they know is, all right, I'm going to work. Okay, what's for dinner tonight? All right, is my kids uh, packed? Like, is their lunch packed? Oh, he wants this video game. Okay, well, it's just a fucking video game. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, they're just going through the motions. They're just going through. Because like I said, at the end of the day, everyone's just trying to do an honest day's work. And that's that's just fact of the matter. You know what I mean? And so uh, you can't you can't fully blame the parent. Max, but then there's Jesus, also like people with people. Attack. I remember I when did uh, Alex. when the fuck were people saying this? What the hell's uh, going on? I think this there was during the Call of Duty the craze. And it's you know at the height at the, at the peak of the Call of Duty, the and station, they were wall. saying that. You know, they're this like, oh, Lupino's they're appealing game. to kids, this and the doing. game's rated Lupino's M, man? and I don't want my kid, really? you know, violent, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's always you about sure the kids. You sure know how to pick a place? And Can you get through? No, it's locked. But we keep in mind, though, it's Lupino, it's kids don't have jobs. Kids, Alex. like, <laughs> why, would you, why would you appeal, try to appeal to kids when they can't pay for the games? Not, not only one, can they not afford it because they don't have jobs and they don't have the money, but they can't buy it. It is, it is literally against law. It's just like selling alcohol or tobacco to a minor. You can't, you can't sell this video game to someone who's 12 or 13 years old. You know what I mean? It is a, um, it's kind of stupid to think uh, that, but, but I can't say, I can't say they're not because when you, when there was uh what, what the fuck dabbing, like call of duty added, like you could dab and shit in the game. Um, I don't I don't know what all the dancers are called, but you know the one with the fucking hips and they swing their arms from side to side and you know that that was put into games. Uh the fucking nay nay, uh that was put into the games. So they're obviously appealing, you know, to these memes and to the younger crowd. And I'm really glad that Call of Duty's kind of on the downward slope. They recognize they still want to milk this, you know, they still want to milk the franchise. Especially, especially when EA came up and they were like, oh shit, Battlefield, like, uh, cause a lot of people were like, a lot of people were realizing that Call of Duty was just, it was just a carbon copy, you know, it was just the same thing over and over and over again. So Battlefield was like, hey, why don't you come over to us? You know, we're, we're a different type of shooter cause Call of Duty was your arcade style and Battlefield Max, was your, Jesus, was more of a simulation. A you know, like you had bullet drop, Attack. you could destroy buildings. You. Um, Alex. it was... Ew. What the hell's going on? You had like there are more corpses here than it's I don't want to say more. less hell. It's an armed robbery, a tunnel job, straight uh, But it was Roscoe slower Bank paced. It wasn't as fast paced wall. as Call of Duty. It was point. definitely more tactical. This is Lupino's uh, in a sense. You know, when you played a squad with Battlefield, you had to work together to win. As opposed this to Call Lupino's of Duty, doing? like Lupino's if you had like three people really? running solo and their KD was you positive, sure you would win the game. You, you know what I mean? No, it's locked. And so that's definitely what Battlefield kind of uh that was that was their market, that was their promotion. Alex? But Alex! When um, Battlefield 3 came out, because I remember this was after Bad Company 2, when Battlefield 3 came out, they they definitely did Call of duty it a little bit. They they changed some features and aspects to where it was a little more arcade, and which makes sense, right? Because you want that market. You want that market. And if you're a Call of Duty player and you're getting sick of Call of Duty, you hear about Battlefield and you try it out, and you're just like, oh shit, this is kind of familiar you know what I mean? It's kind of familiar that it, you know, it kind of feels like Call of Duty, but at the same time, it's still different enough to where the game is different. And so, you know, Battlefield 3 came out, then uh, they came out with Battlefield 4, which I didn't like. Uh, right now, there's Battlefield 1, and now the next one is Battlefield 5. You know, ever since ever since Call of Duty 4 came out, it definitely put a modern warfare. Um, you know, not to use the name, but you know, now everything is modern. You know, we got UAVs. You know, we're using M4s, and the modern warfare, the modern battle shit, definitely took a trend in gaming. Uh, now it's it's oversaturated, and so this hence why now we have Call of Duty World War Two, and we have Battlefield One. And we have, like, it's definitely, there's only so much you can capitalize in. You can't really, in a video game at least, right? I think Battlefield could pull it off just because of 
just because of the play style, you know, how they do it. But, like, let's say for Civil War, like, like if you want to do, like, Battlefield Civil War, and now you got, like, muskets, you know, and shit, and, you know, you, you only have one shot, it's super inaccurate, and now you got to put the gunpowder back in, you got to stuff it, you got, you know what I mean? Like, that's not very fun. And that's been tried before. Um, History Channel, they had a video game. Uh, and the video game was actually like, like gameplay wise, it was pretty good, but it was just like super, super buggy. And because their quality assurance sucked ass, they actually weren't able to, uh, necessarily make, make a market and make a demand for, for that type of game. But I definitely noticed, um, you know, these trends, uh, that the gaming industry has been going through. For instance, another one was that this, um, Un- unfinished games that's that's how you say it on um so so back in the day right and i say back in the day but i mean yeah for the gaming industry back in the day a game like let's say they're like oh this game comes out october and then the game gets delayed and they're like oh shit it's not coming out till december till january like whatever yeah we would be mad but the developer, they'd say, hey, we're delaying the game to give you a quality product. We are giving you something of quality and we want to give you something of quality. And so we are delaying the game because it still has problems and we weren't able to meet the original deadline. It's justified. I get that by all means. But it became a marketing technique. It became a marketing technique. And it was basically for the hype train, right? It was, it was for the hype train. And it would be, you know, they would, because also what would happen was these games would get released or they'd be, get get announced. Sorry, not released. They'd get announced. There'd be a trailer. People would get all fucking hyped for it. And then it would just go dead silent for however long. And the hype would die down. You know, other games would, you know, be showing off and everything. And by the time your game came out, your market was not necessarily as big and so you actually ended up losing players. You ended up losing money. And so some some of the publishers, you know, some, you know, these big companies, they realized that and they and they said, OK, well, let's announce the game in February. Uh, let's say that it's going to come out this fall. And so, you know, they're releasing trailers and shit like every couple months. And, you know, they're keeping uh, players interested. But then a month before the shit comes out, they say, oh, the game is delayed. The game is delayed. And they're like, it's not going to come out for like another two months. When really, that was their real release date, right? Was it wasn't going to come out in October. It was going to come out in December. But, you know, just for the sake of hype, right? For the sake of hype, they said it's going to come out in October. And then a month before it comes out, right before the shit comes out, they say it's going to go. Perfect example. Watch Dogs. Perfect fucking example they showed one of the most badass things you know and they were like oh you're in this big city you can hack everything you know it's it's this and that and everyone was all fucking hyped for it right before the game comes out oh it's delayed oh it's delayed and then when the game came out it was still shitty the game still fucking sucked and off the top of my head i can't remember i think mafia was another one um i remember this was around the time witcher 3 came out um but then i have to say i do have to say that while the witcher 3 when that game it was still playable it was still playable but it was still like it still had a bunch of problems still had a bunch of bugs but these the developers were literally updating it every they were treating it as an mmo essentially and they were still updating this game almost every single week and on top of the updates they were giving free content whether it was some new weapons some new armor you know some new stats some patches like it was crazy ridiculous and then their expansions i had so much respect for cdpr because they're passionate they are authentic they are there's very few developers that i have respect for uh one of them like i said cd project red I have tons of respect for Nintendo. I have tons of respect for um, Bethesda. I have tons of respect for. Uh, it used to be Bioware. I used to, have, you know, it used to be Bioware. But I mean, when Andromeda came out, that's when I could tell they were, 
Yeah, yeah, we know how that went. And then they actually tried to blame. They tried. They were like, "Oh, Andromeda didn't do good because Breath of the Wild came out." Like, uh, like, no, motherfucker. It was because your game wasn't that good. Believe it or not, right? Like, how the fuck? Because you already know. Like, if you if you play games. Uh, if you're a gamer, you already know Zelda is a titan franchise in gaming. It's just as big as Mario. It's just as big as Call of Duty. It is just as big as Skyrim. It is just as big as everything else. And so you're telling me, right? Granted, and especially when you like, you already had your Mass Effect trilogy come out, and so it's done. You want to go back to the Mass Effect universe because there's so much more to be had in it. But let's compare the two. You have the Zelda franchise, which has been going strong and going hard since the 80s, right? Every Legend of Zelda game has been fucking quality, whether it's a handheld, whether it's a home console, whether it's... There is literally not a bit... Actually, Triforce Heroes was kind of shit. But actually, I don't even think that fits within the uh, official timeline, in the official Zelda timeline. So really, you can't count that. It still has the Legend of Zelda, like like Hyrule Warriors. Notice how it's not called Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors. It's just called what Hyrule Warriors uh, because it's not canon. And they don't, you know, they, they just, really they did that to make a little bit more money. The Wii U was, oh God, that's a whole nother fucking thing. But fuck, I forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't revisit a franchise be completely different and then go up against you know this this strong ass this strong ass title that has been consistently selling uh and being remastered by demand by popular demand since the 80s <laughs> like, Everything all right. like what Bossy. 80 90 Joey, uh zero Julio. ted like right they've been making these games for over 40 it. years okay, right and you're you do now. you decide to Bossy. release your game and in. then not only not only when your game released was it not good and it wasn't quality but then you're just like oh it wasn't our fault it wasn't our fault like that's that's just like saying um you're gonna come out with a new movie, right? And what's a what's a big movie? Uh, Fast and the Furious, right? Fucking huge right now. And you you just came out with a remaster of like Freaky Friday or some bullshit. And then like you know people yeah, know Freaky Friday, wrong with the like, you know we all know hey, the story. Hey. But then like you you're it just tanks at the box office. And then you're just like, oh well our movie didn't do good because uh, like you know what I mean like. It's just like going against Star Wars, something that's been around for a shit ton of time. It's been going, and granted, I can't say all of them have been quality, because we all know how The Last Jedi went, and I don't want to get into The Last Jedi too much. Like, granted, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm not a heavy Star Wars fan, right? I'm not, I'm not a, uh, like, I'm, I'm in between a passive and active fan. Like, I do like Star Wars, I do play the games, I do watch the movies. Um, I haven't read the books. I actually didn't even know Star Wars started out as books. Like, I remember growing up, I was like, I was like, why the fuck is everyone so big on this Star Wars? Like, people are dressing up, people, you know, mid midnight fucking movies and shit. I was like, but then yeah, come to find out, Star Wars is a fucking, it's a huge, huge book series, and I had no clue. I had no clue. Like, I don't even think they'd all share the same author. Like, I'm pretty sure Star Wars is written by, like, tons of fucking different people. And, um, it's actually, like, yeah, I don't, is, is it an anthology? I know, I know there's, like, a Han Solo lady, series. My lord. I think maybe that that's what it is. Like, it's characters that have the series. And my lord, there is. It's not necessarily, indeed, my lady, there is indeed. Whatever, not to, not to, you know, get into too much of that. Um, actually, I'm, a, I'm actually starting to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish off this episode. I've been, I've been going for a while now, and we talked about a lot of shit. I actually wanted to start this episode because I came, I came to the realization that I am, I am depressed, and I know I don't sound it, I know I don't act like it, but I'm looking at my actions, right? As of, as of right now, in this whole episode, like, I'm, I'm pretty fucking drunk. And I've noticed that I am doing the same thing day in and day out. And I'm mad. And I'm irritated. And I'm upset that things have not been going the way I planned, right? Things aren't going my way. 
And it's not it's not so much of the fact that it's a little thing here or there. It's I've been looking for a job. Um, geez, for for a while now, I've been looking for a job for a while and I'm mad because I haven't gotten one yet. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It is it is kind of my fault. I am being a little picky. I don't want to take a pay cut, but more than likely, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to take a pay cut. I'm going to have to work for a little bit above minimum wage. And, you know, I'm going to have to work a grunt job and I'm going to have to grind for a little bit. And at the end of the day, if that's the name of the game, that's the name of the game. You got to do what you got to do. We all still have fucking bills to pay. But I came to the realization that and I kind of had to uh, put my ego on the back burner. And, you know, I'm not some high speed badass that I thought I was. And, uh, you know, I do have all these skills and quals and shit and. But it's right now, it's just it's not my name of the game. And so I do have this interview tomorrow um, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that works out. I will update. You know, I'll definitely let you guys know uh, if it goes through. I'm hoping it does. I've been studying. I've been doing a lot of hands on work. I've been. But you never know. Right. You never know. And so I got yesterday. I got super drunk. I bought a 12 pack. Right. And I drank eight of the beers in one sitting and I got completely fucked up. I fell asleep, got nothing done yesterday. I woke up hung over in the same day, um, huge ass headache. And I just, and I, I'm drinking a bottle today. I'm almost, I'm almost halfway through this bottle of whiskey. And like, li- this is fucking sad. Like it literally, I'm not doing anything with my life. I am not doing anything and I can't fucking stand it. And I, and I hate not being engaged in some kind of goal. And the worst part is, is I have goals, but it's taking so much fucking time to accomplish them and to achieve them. And my life is moving so fucking slow right now that it's so irritating. It is so fucking aggravating. It is so upsetting because I can't, I can't do what I want to do because I don't have these basic things starting up like, like right now. Right. All right. I got my car. Knock that off the list. I'm trying to get a job. And after I get this job, I'm going to get a house. And but I can't get a house if I don't got a job. And so I got a car. Right. I can get back and forth. It's a reliable mode of transportation. I can get back and forth, you know, to my job and shit. But I don't have a job yet. And so right now I'm fucking homeless. Like I'm a, I'm a statistic, right? I'm a, I'm a veteran that got off active duty and I'm jobless and I'm homeless. And like coming to that realization and like right now I'm staying with my grandmother and that is this fucking phone. I swear to God, I no fuck this, fuck this shit. <laughs> I don't, uh, oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know if y'all remember, but the, I can't stand this fucking phone. It constantly goes off. It's loud as shit. I don't know if y'all heard that, but no, it's, yeah, I'm living with my grandmother right now, you know, bless her heart, but she doesn't, she doesn't want me to stay with her and I don't want to be here either. I really don't want to be here because I really feel like I am failing at life. I really do feel like that I am not. I'm I'm not on the uphill, you know, I'm not headed towards a place up. I'm fucking stagnant. And if this shit doesn't work, if this shit doesn't go through on Tuesday, then I'm taking, I'm taking the next minimum wage job because I'm not. And I say minimum wage for my department, not actual minimum wage, because I actually have like enough skills and like certs and shit to, um, you know, go over that. Uh, but I'm, I'm, like I said, it's upsetting because I know what I'm worth. I know my work ethic. I know how I am. And basically, I'm just I'm just going to have to grind. I'm just going to have to grind. It's not something I want to do. It's going to take time out of what I'm trying to accomplish. It's going, you know what I mean? And that's that's why I started this episode was to kind of take my mind off of, uh, you know, those dark thoughts and try and trying to, uh, you know, kind of sidetrack, just kind of getting, you know, just kind of ranting, uh, getting my voice off and everything. And I'm not trying to, um, ask for pity or anything like that, but I, I came to a realization. Um, it did. 
and I think by actions, I'm pretty sure by actions, I am, I am depressed, and I, I need to make some changes. I need to make some changes right now. And as soon as, as soon as I hang, you know, as soon as I, um, you know, put up this microphone, I'm literally, ju- I'm going to take a piss and I'm going to go right back to, uh, you know, studying and shit for this job, for this job position. And, um, you know, fingers crossed, well, what is that? fingers fucking what? crossed because it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really important job. It's a very high paying job for what I think I'm worth. And I hope I get lucky. I hope I get lucky. Um, yeah. So, you know, not to, not to end this episode off, you know, on a, on a fucking bad note, you know, not to, not to end this off on a, like a somber, serious kind of depressing manner, but I came to a realization and maybe whoever's listening to this, maybe you came to a realization too, that you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And there is something more important that you should be doing and there are changes you need to make in your life so you can reach the goals that you want to achieve um i did make out like a new roadmap i do have a new plan to achieve what because what i'm doing ain't working right and if it ain't working then i need to change it just plain and simple so i do got a new roadmap i do got a new plan to uh, you know go ahead and do what i'm trying to do but what what I, I, yeah i need to make changes so that's all Thanks for listening. You know, thanks for sticking around. Uh, Anything, you know, you want to tell me, anything you want to get off your chest, anything you want to send me, torture talks at Gmail. Y'all know how to hit my line. But for now, once again, appreciate y'all. And that's all.